I'm going to show you how to photograph the moon. You don't need a tripod to photograph the moon. It's different than photographing the stars where of course you do need a tripod. The reason you don't need a tripod is because the moon is so bright. The sun is hitting it directly and you can use a fast shutter speed so you can avoid any handshake therefore you don't need a tripod. So I have a 200 millimeter lens on this camera and as a general rule of thumb I want to sh set the shutter speed first. If I am zoomed in at 200 millimeters then I'm going to double the focal length go with a shutter speed of 1 400th of a second. That way I will avoid any uh, camera shake from the hands. As well I'm going to use autofocus. It's easy to find the focus point when you're photographing the moon because it's so bright in the sky. Again, so different than the stars where you have to use a manual focus. So I'm going to put the camera into manual mode, go with a 1 400th of a second shutter speed. Um, I'm not going to shoot wide open with the aperture, which on this lens is f4. I'm going to go three stops. Ah, let's go four stops from the bottom, which is f 6.3 and my reason for doing that is to get closer to that sweet spot of super sharp photos which you don't get when your aperture is completely wide open and the last variable is ISO and let's try an ISO of 640 and just see how it looks the moon is completely clear there are no clouds over it and I took four pictures there because Chances are some of the photos will not be as sharp as others. Check the histogram. Histogram looks great. Zoom in. Let me show you. You be the judge. Actually looks pretty good. So if I zoom in on the bottom, you can see those craters there. So not bad. And there's the histogram and you can just see on the very bottom that faint line uh, which represents the whites in the histogram. It's almost touching the right-hand side. So I'm pretty happy with this setup. And once again, this is uh, 1 400th of a second, F8, and ISO 500 using a 200 millimeter lens. And um, all of that was shot handheld. You can use all of these techniques to photograph the lunar eclipse or the blood moon lunar eclipse which for me is about to happen tomorrow night so I'm going to be out here in the same spot shooting the eclipse. Now the nice thing about shooting the moon is that you don't need to go to an area of dark sky. You want clear sky but you can photograph the moon from the city limits when there's uh, artificial light which is very different than photographing the stars. So now I'm going to import these images into Lightroom and let's take a look at uh, what they look like after they've been processed. I've got Lightroom open. Let's first start with one that is just a little bit on the darker side and zoom in to 2 to 1 so we can see it better. And let's try and recover something out of this and uh, let's turn up the white point on it pull down the black point to create a bit of contrast and you can clearly see that this is a really noisy image. So instead of using this one, let's take a look at the one beside it which was much brighter in the first place. Look at the histogram up here in the top right. Um, the whites are right up to the right hand side and the image itself looks completely blown out but let's see what we can recover because we did shoot this in raw and lo and behold we can recover a lot so I pull down the highlights and I'm going to turn up the white point already it's looking so much better right about there and let's pull down the black point a little bit just to create some contrast I've got it at a minus eight let's give it some clarity this will make a huge difference Clarity is like adding contrast to the midtones, and I don't want too much clarity. I want it to still look real, so I'm at a plus 11 there. Give it a bit of dehaze. Now let's think about the um, the white balance. If we go to daylight white balance, it gives the moon that sepia look. So if I go to auto white balance, it cools it off a little bit and 
I think that that looks more natural. So this is one of the rare times that I'm using auto white balance. It gave it a temperature of 4750. So just uh, to see as well what we can do with this, I'm going to turn up the brights on the, on the tone curve and pull down the darks and it gives it even more contrast. Don't want to give it too much. I might be borderline with too much contrast as it is. I don't want to introduce any color into it, so I'm not going to play with these HSL sliders. And let's see if we can sharpen it up just a bit. Um, see what a 75 does if I put the noise reduction up at 20, and that made a huge difference. Um, let's just see with masking as well. I'm holding down the Alt button and pulling up on the masking and uh, that would be like the option on the on a Mac and now everything that is white will be sharpened everything that's black will not be sharpened I'm going to let go there and that way I'm only sharpening really the edges um, just see what enabling lens corrections does I'm going to keep that on I'm going to turn on remove chromatic aberrations and this is a wrap now here's something that you can do with your lunar eclipse photos or your blood moon photos and that would be to actually use the image of the moon as a composite within another photo that you have let's do this really quick you right click on the image down below and select edit in adobe photoshop cc and photoshop is now going to automatically open up for us and it's going to open up this image so the image is open and I'm going to zoom in to 200% just so that I can see this a lot better. Let's use the selection tool and make a big square around it. It is selected nice and centered. And now edit, copy. Now go to the image that you want to use it in. Edit, paste. Ah, different color space. Hopefully it's going to work out with a different color space, I hope. Move it up into the sky. Now here's the layer here. And change the, the layer type to screen. And screen will only select the bright parts of the image. And so we can see that, yeah, it's a pretty big moon. If we really want to go nuts, we could stretch it, move it put it right there between the buildings. Yeah, okay, that looks actually just completely <laughs> faker than fake itself. But yeah, that's kind of within the realm of possibility right there. Um, I'm going to reduce the opacity on it because it is just looking too bright. 75, not bright enough. 90 is looking nice. Click down below and yeah, that that has an element of, of reality to it. Let's take a look at one other image. This is Mount Rainier in Washington State. Go edit, paste, different color space. Yes, yes, we know. Move the moon up to where I'm going to want it ultimately. Change the layer mode down here to screen. Uh, maybe just a little bigger. Reduce the opacity, 88%. I don't know, do you buy it? Yeah, I, I sort of buy it. It it could be real. Um, maybe a little higher over here. And maybe it's, I don't know, there's something in this one where it kind of looks too bright to me. Probably because I know that the sun is down here and this is an evenly lit moon. This is probably not the best photo to use this on because uh, we can clearly see that the, the sun has set down to the right. Darken it right around there. It makes it a little more believable. But uh, that's the basic technique of um, shooting the moon handheld. And for me, tomorrow is a lunar eclipse. It's going to be a blood moon. And this is exactly the technique that I'm going to use in order to photograph the moon and process the moon using Lightroom. And then I'm going to make a composite. And I hope that you will too. I hope you leave a comment on this video. Let me know if you have used these techniques in order to create your own shot. And this is a YouTube channel, so I would appreciate if you would support this channel by subscribing and liking the video and leaving a comment. Thanks so much. Happy shooting.